And are you going to hide? Or are you going to seek? Are you going to hide? Or are you going to seek? Well, next we see, if you want to write this down, number two, pride hides in two caves of self-reliance. Write that down. Pride hides in two caves of self-reliance. Pride hides in two caves of self-reliance. It goes on. Now the famine was severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of his palace. And they go on, the writer goes on to make this huge contrast between Obadiah, who was obedient to God, and Ahab, who we've seen earlier, is more evil in his heart than any king prior to him. And Ahab's cave is a cave of license. Write that down. First of these two caves. Ahab's cave of license. Ahab's cave of license, which is willful disobedience. Willful disobedience, write that down. License, willful disobedience. And we're in a cave usually because we're afraid. It's rooted in pride, it's in self-reliance, and and fear tends to be the motive that we're in the cave. And it's fear of losing something. And if you're in the cave of license like Ahab, you're afraid of losing control. License is fear of losing control. If you're in Ahab's cave of license, you're afraid of losing control. See, it says there in the text in verses 4 and 5 that Ahab doesn't want to kill any of the horses or the mules. Well, you know why? It represents his military control. It represents his kingdom. He does not want to lose control. And in our cave of willful disobedience of license, we're afraid of losing control. And it's always been that way. It's nothing new. Genesis 3, verses 8 through 10. Let's look at this. Then the man and his wife heard the sound. Now, because of their pride, because they've desired life apart from God, and they knew the consequences and they did it anyway, then listen to what happens. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord. The word of the Lord came as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I always picture that as something like this, something like, shh. And they did what? They hid. They hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? The word of the Lord came. He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked in my sin, so I hid. And man has been hiding from God in his pride and his fear ever since. And this first cave is willful disobedience, license, the fear of losing control, and it's a heart condition. It's a hard heart against God. Well, our second cave of self-reliance that we see is Obadiah's cave of legalism. Legalism, write that down. Obadiah's cave of legalism, which is self-righteous obedience. Legalism, self-righteous obedience. Now, Again, the writer of the text goes to great length to show us that Obadiah is obedient, okay, a devout believer. I don't believe that Obadiah is a legalist. I believe that he's going to fight with legalism, which you and I do all the time if we take our faith and our obedience seriously. There's the risk that we'll uh, trust in our obedience and our self-reliance rather than in the one whom we're obeying. See, Obadiah means the Lord's servant, the Lord's servant. And Obadiah's going to use that word a lot, servant, as he talks. And uh, he's probably not the Obadiah, who's the writer of the uh, book of the prophet Obadiah. And he's the servant there of also Ahab, and of, his, of his palace. And uh, he probably has the means to hide these prophets, which I think he's supposed to do, probably, by the text, in two caves of 50 each, in case one would be found, the other wouldn't. But look what he says when he encounters Elijah. He goes, oh, Elijah, he gets to the ground. He says, you're the man. You're the man. You're God's man. Elijah, the word of the Lord comes through Elijah to Obadiah, and he says, go tell your master I'm here. And Obadiah goes from this knees-bent position and looks up at him and says, you got to be kidding me. He's going to kill me. And this is what legalism here is. It's fear of losing the reward. Write that down. It's fear of losing the reward. Or gaining judgment. Or gaining judgment. 
And he says, you're going to kill me. You know, this isn't the way it should work, you know. And write this down. He says, my past obedience should warrant future blessing. Write that down. My past obedience, Elijah, warrants future blessing. Look what he says. It's in the second part of verse 12. He said, uh, yet I, your servant, servant of the Lord, have worshipped the Lord since my youth. Those are servant and worship are plays on the name of, the, of the, uh, Obadiah. I have worshipped him since my youth. My past obedience, Elijah, warrants future blessing. Haven't you heard? Listen to what else I did. While Jezebel was killing the prophets, I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets in two case, 50 in each, and supplied them with food and water. And now you tell me the word of the Lord comes and seeks, and you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah's here? He will kill me. Please let me hide in my cave of legalism, of self-righteous obedience, of self-reliance. Please, Elijah, please, God, we say, let Past obedience warrant future blessing. It's always been this way. Look at Job. It's going to come on the screen. Job 13, verses 20 through 24. Job's in the midst of his trial, in the midst of his famine, in the midst of his adversity. He says, only grant me these two things, O God, and then I will not hide from you. Withdraw your hand from me and stop frightening me with your terrors. Then summon me and I will answer, or let me speak, and you reply. Don't we say this? To God. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offense and my sin. The audacity of legalism to say that to God. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? It's almost a false humility that Paul writes about in Colossians 2. In your cave of self-reliance. Which one is it do you think you're in? Which cave of self-reliance do you think you're in? Legalism, like Obadiah there, fear of losing your reward, your past obedience warrants future blessing? Or maybe is it license? You're afraid of losing control. You're just being willfully disobedient toward God. You'll know which one it is if you know which one you're afraid of losing most, are you afraid of losing control? Or are you afraid of losing your reward from your past obedience? It's interesting. Obadiah corresponds with the Arabic name Abdallah. Abdallah is an alias of the person who represents in our world today the, the, the picture of hiding in a cave. Who would that be? Osama bin Laden. He goes by the alias Abdallah, which means servant of the Lord. Uh, when we were on our family vacation here a couple weeks ago, our uh, connecting flight we missed, and we got scattered on the next flight to where we were going. And so I ended up sitting beside a man, and I kept noticing his ring on his, on his finger. And he's probably in his early 50s, and he just was really, like, strong-looking. And I was reading a book, a book that you could easily tell was about God and about the Bible. And um, I'm looking at his ring. I notice he's looking at my book. So every encounter is a divine appointment, right? And I'm saying, oh, God, thank you for letting this happen. And I, so I ask, what's that ring? I find out that he's Delta Forces. It's a Green Beret, and that was from El Salvador. And he says, I'm really proud of that. And he says, but, you know, now uh, my age, I'm working with the State Department. And I, can't, I was not comfortable in a public setting saying everything that he told me. But I want to tell you this. He's been part of looking for Osama bin Laden. And he says, from his perspective, from Osama's perspective, it's a servant of the Lord. It's a, um, this is my word summarizing. It's a legalism, cave of legalism perspective. It's a cave of legalism perspective. He doesn't want to lose his reward from obedience. And he uses that when he recruits people. You'll be rewarded for this. You'll be rewarded for this. And fear of judgment. If you don't, this is going to happen. If you don't, this is going to happen. And you know, but the irony is he does all that, but he's still licentious. He still wants control. And it dawned on me in a conversation with someone this week in my office that we know what we really do. We really bounce around from cave to cave, hiding in our pride and our self-reliance, depending on which cave is most convenient for us at the moment. Somebody might be very legalistic, and all of a sudden, boom! 
boom, they say, do something or say they're really licentious, all about, you know, willful disobedience. Loose people, licentious people, all of a sudden will become very legalistic on an issue. And it's whatever is convenient for us at the time. But you know what's interesting? As we bounce from cave back to cave, each time we're bouncing over what God intends for us in Jesus Christ. And so, write this down. 